Here's another little setup. I've basically made another circuit that has the same layout as the first one. Other one's over here, so you can see I've got RF choke down there. You know, I've got the capacitor in a Tesla Umir circuit. My other coil. And over here, the only difference is, is I've omitted the capacitor. And this is my uh, RF choke on this little slug here. That's a I think it's about uh, 10 microhenry. I'm not real sure. I think it's pretty close to 10 microhenry. I don't think it matters a whole lot. I believe this is a Colpitz oscillator, but it's incredibly easy to build, you know, once you actually do get some ballpark value. So this is yet another MOSFET. It's, these seem to work okay in uh, SSTCs. This is a 460 that's uh, labeled 027H and I've actually got I'm not going to say it's a crap MOSFET so basically you know with these values sticking with a primary about sort of like the other coil you know you've got you know between five and six turns or so and then you've got somewhere between you know a 50 to 150 picofarad range let's say and then you've got about 4.7 nanofarad using this capacitor 4.7 nanofarad seems to work about the best if i drop that down or raise it down any i don't i don't get the uh, same performance now like i say what's funny is of, of all the years you know back in the days playing with slater exciters the craze that gets it's it's just interesting how you know you can technically sit, build a circuit like this set it at 12 volts and you know you're it, it basically becomes a like a slot jammer circuit you know rf thrower i guess you could say and you know about 12 volts or less you know you light up stuff wirelessly one wire run load stuff like that and it's just everyone's doing that with tesla coils slayer exciters things like that but it really wasn't until i got onto this you know high frequency circuit using Tesla Unmer's schematic that I really started messing with this and you know it's just kind of funny because this in itself is pretty cool. I'm at 25 volts now because um, just just the way I've got it set but you know it'll run way lower than that you know so here's just the LC oscillator by itself you know so obviously you know this is putting out RF power and um, this will be pretty much the same same thing that you'll see uh, you know those little slot jammer circuits but they're just using high frequency transistors and uh, you've got a little feedback winding so you know it's not quite the same circuit but you know you more or less get the same results with this oscillator and you could use pretty much a whole range of different MOSFETs and uh, it puts out quite a bit of power so like in this case with it at uh, you know roughly 72 watts or so you can uh, you know, like I say, it's it's putting out a hot arc, and I have reason to believe that you know you was to cut this up high enough in voltage, if you've got a capacitor that could take it, then you might even be able to pull a, a steady flame just off this high leg right there. Uh, and you know, when I get too high in a voltage, though, at these 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 uh, plates start discharging together you know the voltage is just reaching too high and it's not able to break out so you gotta you gotta walk a fine line but yeah the higher I crank the voltage the more power I'm able to pull out of there you know and again that's a pretty high arc that will just continue to get hotter but what I like about this setup is you see I'm pulling this arc right now and, it, and it's uh it's not really loading it down anymore it's maintaining steady power draw I, I upped uh, the the uh, resistor coming in from the from the positive rail uh, to something closer to 5k and really all that did was make it so uh, I really had to be careful with how I was adjusting it and I wasn't really expecting that, but uh, that basically meant that I would have to set it to my desired voltage first, then cut this up to get it kick started because any, you know, once I had it running, raising the voltage any amount after that would just uh, really increase that gate voltage and start driving it way harder than I'd want. With this, with the two 1Ks, it, you know, it seems to be sort of, a, you know, you, you set it once and you vary the voltage from there. So that's kind of cool. This is pretty much how the, how, how the other one I just built works um, minus the other resonator and yeah, this shoot this coil right here is getting pretty hot so yeah it might be good to have that that resonator there but yeah it's just really really cool oscillator 
I'm, I'm surprised. I I wish I knew about these a long time ago. I've been playing with them a whole lot more. But uh, right now it's about nine megahertz. But you know, like I say, I can uh, let me sweep down. So I'm just gonna change the cap here. Obviously, you know, it's, it's changing the uh, frequency of this oscillator. And if I go all the way down here, I'm down to uh, a little under five megahertz, and I'm hardly pulling anything now. Still, still almost wanted to light a little bit. So that's sort of a way to uh, drop the uh, current consumption on this. So I'm gonna pull it back up. Let's see. Uh, so right about there, the light came back on. About six. A little over six and a half megahertz you still get the effect and I'm still under an amp there um, obviously you know you're pulling way less power I'm not I'm not gonna pull any crazy high arcs up there but uh, until I start bumping the frequency up some more but it's, yeah I can bump it up to let's just say hmm let's just say I want to pull an amp um, then there you go it's about 7.2 megahertz and you know this is my becomes my circuit now so pretty cool but you know I prefer to uh, crank it up closer to nine obviously the higher I raise the frequency the brighter this is going to get up to a point then I start pulling a lot more amps which is not ideal so I found around the nine megahertz region to be a pretty good uh, pretty good deal here where I can do that push in pretty good power get a pretty good field and it's not incredibly hard to wind a resonator at around 9 megahertz so that's how that goes and so here's like uh, the glowing or you get the get the bulb glowing or whatever but that is man I, f I feel like this <laughs> I feel like it's gonna crack this bulb doing that because it's so hot but you know, of course, that's that's how it usually goes with it, uh, Tesla coils, also. But yeah, I mean, it's it's putting out. So yeah, if I had like a little smaller bulb, and you know, <laughs> you could do the cool little trick of where you light it up completely just by uh, touching it there. But uh, whoo, yeah, it's ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't want to do that for long. There goes a little sodium bulb. Let's see what that does. I'm gonna have to touch it to it. But it's about 70 watts. <laughs> it kind of lights it up a little bit. You can sort of see little ripples in there. I don't, even, I don't know if I can get my camera to uh, show it. See that? As I, I'm pulling an arc, and uh, you see the little ripple in there. It forms like little beads, I guess. It's really cool. It's hard to. Uh, it's hard to catch that. Camera does not want to capture that very well. Huh. See as I'm holding it here I I don't actually have steady contact now. The terminal, but see it's got this little wireless coherence there and it's showing this real cool looking color. That's interesting. Huh. That's only near the terminal. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. It's basically forming like a channel. I don't know how that works. I mean, I guess it's like a Must be must be the field that it's formed between the two there. It's just Doo -doo 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 
Huh. Interesting. Sucker gets pretty bright. Hot. Back to sort of what I was talking about with the tuning. Um, I've made a little mark here uh, to sort of get an idea of where I was. So I'm at 30 volts now, and you can see the output is, is not that great. But see, if I tune it back, the output grows a little bit more. So this, I've got my little hump right here. If I dial in right there, it'll reach a peak, and then it'll start going back down. So you see if I'm on this side of the hump, let's say, then uh, the closer I move my hand to it, it's going to get more in tune. Right, and if I tune it back to uh, maximum right there, well, that just ignited some of that little glass. But you see, that's when it starts to go out. It starts to get dimmer because I'm I'm getting it out of tune, as opposed to moving it closer, maybe on this end where it gets more in tune. So that's that's sort of like what I meant as far as tuning this this value here, depending on your output. It's just like uh, dual resonant Tesla coils. And it's, it's just interesting how that works. Maybe that thicker screw would uh, hold up, but yeah, it's only been running like a minute. You see that one's starting to uh, break down there. So, yeah, I might need to go find like a uh, a pretty big cap nut. Because them screws, they just, they just start getting the red hots.